Welcome back to another episode of Vision Quest. My name's Ashley Appap. I am the host of this podcast. I'm a writer and comedian from Melbourne, Australia, and welcome. If you are used to hearing this introduction, that means that you've been here before, and that means that you've returned, and I am truly grateful for that. Welcome back, my friend. How are you? I hope everything's well. I hope you're healthy and safe and happy. And as always, doing uh, regular poos. Uh, and if this all sounds confusing and weird to you, that's because maybe you have been here before. And to you, I say, welcome, my new friend. We are now bound by the powers of probably the internet. I don't know how else you would really find this. Unless someone put this on like a floppy disk somewhere um, and it's like the apocalypse and you've like gone back in time, you found... Um, a PC that can put a floppy disk in it and you've played this and you're like, what's happening? Uh, just so you know, if you are from the future, gone back in the past, the year is 2021 as I'm recording this and I'm here in Melbourne, Australia. And this is a podcast where I talk to people that I enjoy about things that they're passionate about and care about. So we start with some questions and then we have the guests talk about their topic. And that's basically what this is. Thank you for coming back from the future to the past just for this. There's probably other things you could be doing, but I, I'm glad you're here. So strap in. We've got a great guest today. We have Zenya Kamalotti here. Welcome, Zenya. Hey, thank you. Hello. Hello. It's so lovely to see you. Yeah, you too. I love it. I know. I mean, for anyone listening, we're not actually, we're on Zoom. We're not in person, sadly. Unfortunately. Um, how are you? What's been going on? Can you, can you let anyone out there know what what's happening right now in your life and who's on your lap? Oh, currently I'm sitting at home due to lockdown, but I have a new new best friend and his name is Max. He's a little little dog. I've decided to foster yeah. him, which I will definitely be adopting. Yeah, um, he's stolen my heart. Truly has my heart. I love him so much. And he just follows me like a shadow. It's, I always wanted a dog like that. I always used to want a chihuahua because I was like, they only love one person, really. Mm -hmm. They'll follow you around. They're your best friend. But I kind of got that just like so much prettier. Yeah. Yeah. He is beautiful. Oh, Max. I, I leave my side. have two dogs at my parents' house. Sadly, not here with me. And the eldest, my little prince, Marshall, um, is exactly like that. He's like my little shadow. He knows the sound of my car approaching if I arrive. Oh, I love that. He's like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> He's the best. They're just so, oh, the unconditional love you get from dogs. Like, I have two cats and they're great. I love them so much. But they don't follow me around. They pick and choose when they want to hang out with me where... Max just wants to hang out with me all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's a special bond. It's so cute. Um, <laughs> can you please let everyone out there know who you are and what you do? So I'm Zenia Carmelotti. I am a singer, actor, dancer uh, living in Melbourne. So I recently just finished, I say recently, just before COVID. Uh, we got cut short in New Zealand with the Book of Mormon, uh, the tour musical. And uh, at the moment, I'm doing Mad as Hell, which will be in the next couple of weeks, the TV show uh, with Sean McAuliffe. And I'm also on a TikTok series called Scattered, which is actually really fun. And we yes. get an episode a day of that, um, five days a week. So that's me. Yay! All incredible stuff. Um, I feel like you, you probably, I don't know if I've said this to you, but I've watched like just videos of you singing specifically and I am blown away like the shivers that I get hearing that beautiful voice is just incredible um thank you it's just, just oh. it's, it's lovely um, and I love musical theater as well so when I get to meet someone who does it for a living I'm like oh my god like it's just <laughs> I just just in awe it's so great it's so fun I found like a um because I would take my brother to shows. Mum would buy us tickets and we'd go and we went to Kinky Boots when that came here. And um, our friend Denise, she took us backstage for a backstage tour and everything. And there's a photo of me and my brother on the stage in front of the audience. And it, I, uh, the caption was, um, when we both have the same dreams to be on stage. And literally like three, four years later, there's photos of me and my family on stage when I gave them a backstage tour in like Brisbane and stuff which was so insane it's it's crazy yeah that like it just it came true yeah but I mean you work hard and you you care about it. I think especially when you do what you love like 
Oh, absolutely. Obviously, it doesn't happen for everyone in that way. But I think if you're focusing on doing it because you love it and just because you want want to be doing it rather than like anything else, it usually happens faster than for the people who are focused on other stuff. Well, that's like Mormon. I actually auditioned for about six times. Well, there you so go. the first time I had auditioned, I was 18 and I didn't get in until I was 22. So it was a long process. And I remember the last audition I did, which is the one that got me in, my agent's like, oh, look, you've got an audition for Mormon. I was like, I'm not doing that again. Like I've done this six times. They're like, just do it one more time. And it's like, you really just have to like, sometimes you do audition for shows like six times and you'll still get no's. And then it's just on that whim, that last one that you think like, no, I'm not doing this anymore is the one that you'll get. Yeah. Which is incredible. Persevere, everyone. (laughs) Don't stop believing. That's right. Journey. Uh, Journey or Xenia, who said it first? I'll never tell. Exactly. (laughs) Absolutely Xenia. Yeah, it was was, was you. There's going to be Instagram posts with all these, you know how there's just like inspirational quotes and it's anonymous and said it's just going to say Xenia. Xenia, that's what it is. Yeah. 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 The quote of 2021. And you won't know what it's about. It could be about, you know, COVID. Mm. Or it could be about your dreams. Don't stop believing. As long as you know that Xenia is the one who said it. Xenia, Z-E-N-Y-A. Just in case you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you like to get into these questions that I have for you? Yeah, absolutely. Let's go. Amazing. All right. So the first question I have for you is, what did you want to be when you grew up and why do you think that is? I wanted to be so many things. Um, I started dancing when I was four, so I always wanted to be a dancer kind of thing. But, um, you know, as you grow up, I like, I loved doing hair. So I'd be like, I want to be a hairdresser. My mum would be like, you know, you have to like stand on your feet for 10 hours a day. Like it's going to be hard. I'm like, no, no, no. I want to be a hairdresser. Then I wanted to be a makeup artist. Um, and I think that was more like, I loved being creative when I was younger And then after a while, when I was in high school, I really loved law and I really wanted to be a lawyer like Mm -hmm. for so long. And like, even in year six, I remember writing a letter to Julia Gillard about the environment and stuff. And I was like, that's it. I'm going to be in parliament. And we went to like, you know, every year six kid goes to Canberra for their camp and stuff. We walked into parliament house. I was like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand up in parliament. I'm going to do all this. I'm going to make a change. Like difference, I'm going to do this. And then that kind of died off and went into the lawyer bit. But then I think it was also because when you grow up telling people you want to be a singer or a dancer or an actor, I would always get the question, but what is your backup plan? Yeah. So I always wanted to be a performer, always wanted to do full-time dancing and things like that. But in the back of my head, I was like, all right, if I don't do this, I'll be a police officer maybe or something. Police officer was my backup plan. Mm -hmm. I knew I'd never do it. Like police or army. I don't know why I'm such a soft bitch. Like (laughs) I really wouldn't be able to do that. But that was my backup plan for people to say. My mum said to me once, she's like, you know, if you want to be a lawyer, like you're going to have to go to like uni for like eight years or something. And I was like, ooh, no, that's okay. I won't be a lawyer. So that's what talked me out of that. Um, But overall, like I wanted to be a performer. So like they were just kind of side things that I'd tell people that I wanted to be just so they'd get off my back about um, being a performer. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I always wanted to do some kind of performing arts. I always, and writing, like I always knew that those are the things that I love. and I remember being like nine years old and just, I was just a funny kid. Still am. She says yeah. as she flips her hair. Um, and I remember my dad being like, you should do stand up comedy. Isn't, is that what you're going to do? And I literally was like, I don't, like I knew what that was, but I was like, I don't understand why, why would you think I, that's what I'm going to do? No, I, I'm going to be like a, like, I was like, I'm going to be an actress. And I did like musical theater classes and stuff. And then I was like, oh, it's so much the the bit that's the most fun for me is making people laugh. Like it's not like I don't I don't really care. Like it is it is still good to make people feel things. 
and get a reaction out of people. But I think the reason that I liked the moments where it was dramatic or anything was because it's like the tension would then be broken by people laughing. And that was always what I was trying to get. Um, and I would then when I went to uni, because I just did a Bachelor of Arts, I was like, journalism, because that's a way to like, you know, get on. T- I, I don't think I understood what journalism was. And then the first class was literally like the news because that's what journalism is. And I was like, wait, I didn't know what I didn't know about any of this. I didn't yeah. Know any of this. Um, and then. Well, I didn't yeah. either. I had no idea. I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a TV presenter. I want to do that weather stuff. And I was like, you need to do journalism mm-hmm. but you would have I, I, you had no idea and a, and a weather person is a, a meteorologist you need like a science degree right <laughs> well, you don't just stand there and look pretty no i mean we can do that you can do that without a degree you've mastered that already we both have um but yeah it's so it's so funny the things that we're like even if in the back of your head you know exactly what you want to do you're just kind of like well this seems like the answer that is what people will accept. So I'm just going to kind of go with that and then keep doing my own thing. It's very interesting. Mm, the influence that, that everyone has around you. Yeah. And it's sad. What they say. Yeah. <laughs> Any kids out there? Follow, once again, listen to Xenia 2021. Follow your dreams. Follow your dreams. I reckon that's the, easily the quote of the year. Yeah. Don't stop believing. Comma. Follow your dreams. <laughs> That's the full quote. We've finished it. it. We've done it. Wow. One question in and we've aced it. (laughs) Um, Okay. My second question for you is what is your favorite thing about yourself? I'd have to say my strength or like I'm very like dedicated to my career. I feel like if anything, it's just been my career. Like I've missed it's crazy. I've missed family events and all these big things. And it sounds sad, but it's like, that's where my passion lies. Like, I just feel so fulfilled and so happy being like doing what I do. And, you know, you have that big thing, like family is great. I love my family. I'm very family orientated, but sometimes like, you know, they can like, it just takes it out of you and you just feel drained. And I'm like, nah, I'd rather be out there. Like, doing what I love (laughs) so it's like it feels like I um you know I'm 24 now I'm nearly 25 and my agent's like Zenia you're nearly 25 like we've got to get this going and I'm like oh okay so it's like dedication Mm -hmm. and I did that all through high school like I never got into any trouble with like the wrong crowd or anything really because they'd be like you're going to this party this this weekend I'm like oh no I've got dance rehearsal So I'd say like my dedication absolutely is my favorite thing, but also like my strength. I feel like I've been through so much crap Mm -hmm. and for me to be where I am now, like I just forget how, how much I've achieved. And like now I'm at where I always wanted to be. I live alone in like this big three bedroom house to myself. I have a dog. I have two cats. Like I live next door to my mom. I have, and I'm, I'm working. I'm a working actor. It's, I take it for granted a lot. Yeah. Like literally living what I always said I wanted to do. Um, and so like sticking through all those things and all the bull crap that people say, and you know, the high school crap I went through really like, I look back now and I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely stronger for it now, but that's what I admire about myself is my strength. Yes. Oh, I love that. That's, that's so true. And, and on, on the, um, the like missing family events and stuff, that's something that I don't think I even recognize was part of being a creative person that I just thought was no, I thought was normal, but also kind of took for granted until recently I had a couple of shows, uh, on a weekend that my family was going away with like my little cousins and it was my nephew's first holiday and I had to leave and then come back and then it basically was this thing where I might have to just only come for one night or it might be a few nights depending on something and my little cousins were like why can't you just cancel it why can't you just come and my mum was like well this is her job this is what she she has to do it we're just gonna have to accept it this is sometimes she's not gonna be able to be here and she was saying it like to me as well because I was like no I don't want to miss out on stuff but I was like oh I hadn't even considered that and I think like 
moving to the US for me was obviously that was I missed a lot of stuff um, and I saw that that way for sure I was like well I have to do what am I going to do not try this so I can put it absolutely in. yeah like I have um, my cousin's wedding in November and I messaged my agent I was like look can you pencil like put this date into my calendar of um, something I'll be unavailable for she goes look I can put it in but like there's no guarantees that you're still going to be able to go like you never like it's so far away November you never know what could be filming or happening in then and I can't just take that off for a, for a wedding yeah which sucks it really does suck sometimes because it's like oh I hate to pick between my family and this but oh I don't know yeah it's a tough one it's a real tough one in in January of 2019 my sister got married and I was uh a director's assistant for this person who had potentially this big shoot in Canada and he wanted me to go with him as well and it was this big thing and I had already told him like look my sister's getting married at this point I'm probably gonna be going home and he was like well you know if this goes ahead you you have to come with me like or you know I'm gonna have to find someone else to replace you like that was the stress of like trying to figure out what do I do in this situation and being like, I might have to miss my sister's wedding. Like, and I it's think it's cooked, isn't it? It's just, it, I didn't, I didn't have to, thank God. Um, but yeah, you have to make those compromises. It's bizarre. Yeah. And then people are like, oh, but you're too, I, I don't know. Yeah. It's so hard. You, have, you listen to what other people say and they're like, you know, family means everything and they do. Like, so does me putting like food on the table as well like that's still part of it I don't just do it because I love it I do but I also need to pay for my rent yeah. and things like that as well yeah there's so much more to it than people think like especially when it's when in other people's eyes it's, it's a choice and it's like well it's not it's not a choice it's work yeah it's like I signed contracts and I legally have to do this as well yeah exactly um okay the next question I have is what's your favorite feeling? So it can be physical or emotional. You know, the, the feeling of when I'm like outside, cause I love being outside. It's like my favorite thing. I feel like um, I'm like a big earth girl or like my, first, like my three signs are Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn. So I'm very like earthy, love it. Um, I feel like that feeling when you like go outside in like, not rainforest, but like the dandenongs, I'd say, like in Melbourne. Mm, the and it's ferns. like that's Yeah, the fresh air. Just that feeling of like pure bliss and not having to do anything but stand there, be present and just like connect with yourself and the earth. That's my favourite feeling. I don't get it nearly enough because I'm stuck in like Werribee, but <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's so nice that's my favorite feeling but like or I'd say like my favorite like emotion is like love and feel like I love feeling love unconditional love is my favorite thing because you have like unconditional love with your friends and your family love without conditions is it seems like it could be rare but it like it's it happens all the time beautiful yeah and I feel like, and that's another thing we take for granted is, you know, being able to have that love with your friends and your family and your partners and things like that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Ah, love, love. <laughs> love, love. I love it. Always love, love. Always love, love. And that's the next quote. Always love, love. I was just about to say that. <laughs> Seriously, we could write a quote book after this, I think. I think we should. One of those little things you give someone on like Mother's Day or something. That's something I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. Okay, we'll, we'll get some publishers in the mix and we'll... Um, hit us up. Hit, yeah, actually, yeah, you come to us. <laughs> <laughs> we don't come to you, you come to us. No, exactly. We're doing the hard work. work. Yeah. Um, okay, my next question is, um, what's your favourite song to cry to? I don't really have a favourite song to cry to because the last time this happened, like the last time I was crying... I just put on, I, my Spotify search was songs to cry to. <laughs> so I, <laughs> and I feel like this was literally last week, but I was also really picky about the songs that I was crying to. Like I clicked songs to cry to, clicked it. And I would be 
skipping through like majority of them be like I just want to cry to a good song give me something that's gonna make me cry even more yeah you know well boy do I have the playlist for you because every answer that any guest tells me I put into a playlist from this podcast that's what I need so I feel like yeah C is a big one you know the Mm -hmm. help I have done it again that one but then I was listening to Ash Nico she's one of my favorite me too me too me too me too I love her Ah, she's so great and then I was like I love her song cry yeah because it's like I would cry to that but I would cry and get my anger and frustration out to that at the same time yes that's a great song to cry to because you can have all the emotions out of at once yes uh, have you listened to her song with oscar Scheller, confidence i don't think so okay give that a listen it's beautiful i've cried to that song before okay that's one i'm gonna suss it it's excellent yeah it's very oh good. i just oh she's so amazing she is um she's coming to the u.s um i said it like i'm there she's going to the u.s and my friend one of my best friends is going to see her in la and is like just fly here and i'm like first of all i can't leave second of all i can't come back in the country if i leave and third of all <laughs> how dare you rub this in my face like i was like no. right so i looked at i was like so you're like doing a world tour around the u.s cool when are you coming here yeah it's not the world it's the u.s say it how it is the jonas brothers did the same thing they're like world tour the u.s I'm sick of it. I'm sick of all this live. You know what? It's it's placist. Yeah. It's the, we deserve it. Sh- the, how dare they? Just because we're an island? Fuck them. We're a quality island, you know? We. Yeah. It, oh. I thought you said instead of a quality, we, we are equality island. And I was like, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> we, I say I'm sitting on stolen land. We are equality. <laughs> Jesus. Not a chance. No, 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 absolutely not. Okay, so the next question is, who is someone you admire? It can be anyone. It can be, like, someone super famous, someone no one has ever met but you. I was going to say my mum. Yes. I admire my mum so much. Like, she is, oh, she's just the best. She's got, she's so strong. Like, the crap she's been through through her life and she's just so bubbly. Like, she spends like I feel like 98% of her time trying to make people feel good and happy like that's what uh encourages her to work at her gym is because she loves making people happy and helping change their lives and make them feel good and she's my like she's my best friend and it's funny because when we were talking she was like oh you know people in the family they say it's really weird and they don't understand how we're so close like we're literally I tell her everything like to the point where like my partner Tim he'll be like are you seriously calling your mum again I'm like yeah I'm FaceTiming I've got to tell her what just happened he's like are you serious like you've already called her like three times today and she's next like, door yeah, I just gotta tell her she yeah she <laughs> lives next door it's it's hilarious she comes over now more because of um Max but she's just she's my favorite she's beautiful she's done everything she could I wouldn't be where I am now if it wasn't for her like she was a single mum until I was eight so she was working three or four jobs just to get me through dancing so I could dance school you know she was always busy and taking me to dance comps for the weekends and things like that like she would go without just so I could have everything oh that's so and she's and she still does it now like she like will come over and be like, All right, I bought you these bed sheets. I bought you this. I bought um Max some jumpers. I bought this, and she's it's just insane. I'm like, oh, I love you. You're great, but I'm trying to be an adult, but I can't because she's just too great. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. I so I was feel very lucky to have met your mum at our beautiful friend Marianne, who I know will be listening to this. Hi, Marianne, we love you. Um, hey, hey, she had a going away picnic. <laughs> And I feel like that's the first time we properly, like, got to have a good chat as well. Exactly. We've always, like, been at the same event every year. But we got to have it. I, sat like, sat there, started chatting to you and your mum, and I was like, oh, my God, these are my people. Like, 
and I said this as well, like your mum reminds me of my mum and Marianne said the same thing. Like I just clicked with both of you so immediately and seeing the two of you together as well, I was like, oh my God, this is like, it's not just that thing where, you know, that, that pickup line when people are like, she's not your mother, she's your sister, but <laughs> not, not in a pickup line way, like in a, like genuinely the way that you were interacting. I was like, oh my God, they're like, sis, they're like me and my sister. They're siblings. Like it was yeah, just beautiful. And your mum's so funny. Oh my God. She's amazing. She's hilarious. And she actually, her dream is to be a stand-up comedian. I know. She told me and I was like, just do it. She would be so good. I genuinely Yeah, will, um... she has so many stories and she always makes people laugh in classes and things like that. She's just like, she, yeah, she just needs to do it, yeah. I reckon. I believe in her. Anyone out there? And she'll be listening too, so... Yes. A- anyone out there who books rooms and wants the funniest person in not just Melbourne, let's dare I say the world, who has not yet started stand up, get get her on 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 the uh, on the stage. I was about to say on the tube and I was like, that's train. <laughs> My brain just shit itself. It happens sometimes. <laughs> it happens to the best of us, okay? Um okay, so my next question is what's some weird kid shit you used to do? I used to be like, I used to lie, like pathologically lie. Like, I can't even, (laughs) it's pretty, like I think about it now, like I would over-exaggerate or I just straight out blatantly lie. Like, I went to um, like a school holiday program for horse riding twice. It was like a week. And then when I came back, I told everyone that I owned that horse that I rode for that week. And I'd be like, yeah, he's just at my stable. <laughs> um, that lie went on for about a couple years. Oh, and it turned into, yeah, I used to have a horse, but um, he got old. And then my favorite lie that I, oh, I've told a couple, two of my favorite lies. So when like the Macca's toys were out then, I had like this, like, um, it was like a little open flip one. I think it was like a Spyro game. Mm-hmm. and like a Spyro soccer game or something. I think I remember these. And I was like, I feel like I was like seven. And I turned around to my friend and I was like, oh, this is actually like a mobile phone. Like mum did something with it and turned it into a mobile phone so I can like text and call people. And she's like, are you serious? Show me. And I was like, no, I can't show you. Like it's, don't worry about it. Like, and I'd pretend to take calls on it and like text. And then <laughs> that night mum got a call from her mum being like hey Kath like I've been on the phone for a couple of hours to this tech guy trying to get um Shania's phone to Shania's toy to turn into a phone like how did you do it and mum's like what are you talking about <laughs> like she's like I have no idea what you're talking about and um she's like yeah then you said that you could turn this Macca's toy into a phone and I was like why would you believe a seven year old like that's clearly not true and mum's like why would you do that? I was like, I don't know. I thought it was funny. Like yeah. I found that hilarious. And then like, I remember one time me and my cousin used to do boxing classes after school mm-hmm. and I had these mints and she's like, can I have one? And I was like, yeah, sure. No worries. And I gave her one and she had it. And I was like, Oh my God, I accidentally gave you a pregnancy tablet. Like it's actually not a mint. And she goes, what do you mean? I was like, if you take it, you're going to get pregnant. Oh my she God. Like, she was like, Oh my God, what do I do? And I was like, I don't know. What are you going to do? Like, you have to be really careful. And we we're like doing handstands. I was like, Don't do handstands because you're going to like shake the baby in your belly and stuff. Like, the whole class, she was on edge about like running and everything because she's like, Oh my God, I'm going to hurt this baby that's growing inside my belly. <laughs> A pregnancy tablet. Tablet. That is amazing. <laughs> Oh my god, that's and beautiful. Then I was like, just kidding, it was a joke. Just kidding. The life inside you wasn't there the whole time. <laughs> it was a mint. It was, it was just a mint. Hey, you're pregnant with mints. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about it. Sorry, you not you didn't oh. actually create life. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> that's so funny. So that's all I did. I just just ended lied. Up lying like that. I thought it was hilarious. Just lied. The guest uh, from the second episode, Kelsey, shout out to Kelsey. Um, when I asked that question, she said something similar. Hers was, she would just lie. 
So you're not alone, at least. It's fun. Like, yeah. I just, it'd just be a comedy show for myself. Like, I was laughing at other people's expense. You know, I was like, wow, my cousin believes that I just got her pregnant through a mint. In utero, more like in mintero. <laughs> that was so bad. The last question that I have for you is, is a big one. Do you think aliens are real? Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. I think they even walk among us. Like, mm. there is so much we don't know. Yeah. And there's so many weirdos out there as well, you know? Right. And there's also, like, we are... Like, such we're so small in this universe. How do you how do you know what's out there? Like, it's ridiculous. The people yeah. that say they don't believe in aliens is nah. I hundred percent believe in aliens, and I hope they saw us out. Yeah. <laughs> if you're out there, hey, don't hurt help us. us. Help us. Yeah, help us. Number one, two, don't hurt us. Three, are you just weirdos imagine if every like really strange oh yeah that's good teach me another language um imagine if you said that and they were like why don't you just like learn french like here here's a and they give you a book and they're like learn this oh you do you know french i learned french in high school (gasps) it was really dumb of me because i'm italian like (laughs) all i really wanted to do was like learn italian so i could speak to my grandmother and then you know like all the, I say in quote, cool kids in high school were like, we're going to do French. So I was like, yeah, me too. Yeah. I can't tell you anything. I cheated on every test in high school. So I definitely didn't learn anything. And the only thing I can tell you now in French is the alphabet. Yeah. I would just like to point out how funny it is that before when you were talking about kids being like, you're going to come to this party in the weekend. You're like, no, 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 I'm good. I'm going to do the right thing. And then you're like, but I cheated on every test in high school. <laughs> That's the only thing I did. And I only ever got caught once in year seven. And then I oh, never got caught again. Smart. And what happened was like, the teacher's like, you cheated. I was like, no, I didn't. And I stood my ground and she's like, fine. Well, you have to retake this test. I was like, fine. And then I got a higher score and I was like, hmm. That's what you get. That's what you get for messing with me. That's so funny. Oh, my God. Um, Don't mess with a cheater. No, absolutely. Because then you'll just get got. I didn't do the same thing because we didn't have Italian as an option. But we had German or Indonesian. And they taught Indonesian from grade two. And then in grade five, you got the choice to switch. And I was like, well, I've already been doing this much Indonesian. I may as well keep going. Which makes sense. Which makes sense. But also, when am I going to use Indonesian? (laughs) <laughs> like it's like german hey and german when am i going to use either of them i wish we had italian because the same thing because i'm also italian and I, I like can barely speak to my nonna like we communicate through gestures and hugs and like squeezing each other's faces and butts like that's how we talk um, yeah i was really lucky that she spoke broken english as well like so like i could follow along and like but i couldn't talk back i could just be like ciao <laughs> a child yeah that's my, luckily my nonno can speak like pretty great english so he's translating all my like when we went I, w- I went to europe with my family when i was 19 and we went to sicily because where my mum's family's from and they all speak dialect but they speak really quickly so even my mum, who s- speaks it fluently was like catching up and then my dad learned which is the sweetest thing my dad learned italian just to be able to speak to my grandparents because he's Maltese which is very cute. beautiful um and then it had been like 25 years since they were in Italy so he's like I'm not used to them speaking this fast he's like trying to catch up my sister can kind of understand what's happening but can't speak it and then I'm just there like no one's looking at me or talking to me like I, uh, I feel so alone like I just didn't know what was going on but then by like day four I just from being around it so much and kind of like really trying to pay attention to what was happening. I could pick up on it, which is so bizarre. Yeah, that's awesome. I would love to go visit my family in Italy. Um, Mum did and she loved it and I have plans to do it. But then like, I was like, oh, damn, this language barrier is really going to kill me. Like, I don't know how I'm going to go with it because they talk to me on um, Facebook and they do it in Italian. Yeah. So I always have to Google translate what they say 
in order to write back what I want to say and then translate that to Italian. Yes, exactly. I I can't do that in person. No. I did try to learn Italian um, the first lockdown and Marianne was really excited. We were going to have like um, picnics in my backyard and talk Italian to each other um and eat figs off my fig tree but it never (laughs) happened I think I lasted two weeks I did Duolingo for like a month a couple years ago and was like I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it and then I was like this is I can't fucking do this okay it's not I I don't have a brain for languages I don't think it's possible for me no I I nearly try I nearly paid for it too for the year I'm glad I didn't because it would have been another waste of money yeah but um the thought was there yeah and that's the thing that counts to all of our italian relatives we're so sorry that we are unable to learn the language that made us exist sorry what are you gonna do we're lazy we can make money we can make you money we just can't mm-hmm. chat to you yeah make you money you can make you food make you laugh that's just as good i can um I yeah can do hand puppets exactly that's funny, right? That's fun. Everyone like this. If you're listening, you're missing out on some primo um, hand puppet work from me. Quality. It is. Absolute quality. Um, I reckon I should screenshot that and that should be in the quote book as well. Yeah. A picture of this. Yeah. Uh, and now we're going to talk about Xenia's topic. Xenia, would you like to tell us all what we're going to be discussing today? We're going to be talking about... The 1986 movie, The Labyrinth. Yes. With David Bowie. I would like to know, why Why did you choose this movie in particular? What's your personal bond to it? So this has been my favourite movie ever since I can remember. Like, I think it was like when I was really young, mum had me at one of her friend's houses. Like I was getting babysat while she was at work and they had The Labyrinth on VHS. And I watched it and I was just obsessed with it. Like I ended up rewinding it and watching it again. And then they're like, if you love it so much, like you can borrow this, the video. I was like, awesome. Never gave it back. Like I still have the Labyrinth video. And I would sit there and just continually watch it on a loop. I was obsessed. And I even asked mum about it. I was like, did you like, you must have loved the Labyrinth or something for me to love it that much. She goes, no, I hate it. (laughs) She's like, I can't stand the movie. I was like, that's so weird because I'm obsessed with it. I just loved it. And the music, like I have it on my Spotify. I'll listen to that sometimes when I go for go for walks. Mm-hmm. I just, it's really, really random too. Like that movie was made like 11 years before I was born. And even as like I watched it recently, I was like, damn, like these graphics are really crappy. But I was, I was I was just a kid. I loved it as a kid. And I think that's what it is. It just kind of like grew with me. It didn't yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. So I, I hadn't seen it in a long time, probably since I was a kid as well. And I watched it right before we recorded this. Um, and then we spoke about it a bit and you said you watched it last night and you said, it's a bit cooked, hey. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> cooked. <laughs> there's so many, there's so many things that I want to, touch on first of all um does jennifer connelly like have like a slightly british accent for some reason like i feel very proper hey yeah like i feel like she's putting on that like the 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 voice you usually hear in like american tv from like the 60s where it's like a housewife and she's like oh hello like it's still american but it's slightly british like um but it's in the 80s so i'm like where did she where did she get this inspiration from for that voice? Like, what is she trying to play at? Like, well, that's like when I was like the start of it, because the Goblin King falls in love with the girl. That's what it's about. And that that's what it said at the start. I was like, okay, this is really weird. Yes. Um, so maybe they're playing on like the youth and the purity and the just – elegance of the girl compared to him like she's a complete 360 of what he's like like he's kind of like gritty and a goblin king yeah that's yeah also she's she's got to be like max 14 right yeah and right right and then as soon as i noticed that they say 
that she's because it's at the very beginning the whole basically the setup of the movie is this girl is looking after her baby brother and she she's clearly obsessed with like fairy tales and um fantasy um and she's like summoned by her stepmother and her dad who's like modern normal times in the 80s and they're like come stop playing outside and reading that book that you're like recite she's like reciting like a play to herself basically to her dog they're like come in you need to babysit your little brother we're going out and she's like it's not fair why do you like you make me look after this baby all the time i never have any plans and then the mum says well if you had a date then we'd let you go on a date you should be dating why aren't you dating which is She's got to be 14. Why don't you just say, do you have friends to hang out with? Go hang out with your friends. Go exactly. have a slumber party. Exactly. No, it's all about she needs to have a date. And then her room's like got lots of toys and like uh, princess-ish stuff all around it. And then she's angry at the baby. The baby's crying. The parents have left. And she's like, I wish the Goblin King would take the baby away. So I think the Goblin King is clearly from the book that she was reading and acting out. And if you, I had a look, like on the mirror she has like all the labyrinth stuff like she's a fangirl labyrinth fangirl and like all the little characters that she like meets along the way are toys in her room Mm -hmm. and um which i found really like i just i've watched it so many times i've never really looked at the detail like i did last night and also i had the subtitles on because now i watch i can't watch anything without subtitles so like the little things like it's chaotic this movie like the little uh goblins and things that run around they say so much stuff that goes unnoticed if you don't watch with subtitles yes and like there's lot i noticed there's lots of repetition of lines as well yeah 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 and like at one stage you know when she's like putting lipstick on the floor to make sure she knows where she's going and like arrows and then you see like this little one just like pick up this tile and he's like yelling and then he's like your mother's an aardvark i'm like what what does that mean yeah no um maybe it's their way around like swearing or like saying something really horrendous i don't know um but yeah, it's it's bizarre because just yeah. So the, when I noticed that it's like she's reading the thing and she's like, yeah. And then the the Goblin King's gonna fall in love with the girl once she um, rescues the baby or whatever. I'm like, okay, so we're setting up for David Bowie to fall in love with this 14 year old, mm-hmm. right? Okay. At okay. the end, when he gives her, so he's from the start to the end, he's offering like he's offering her her dreams, her dream life in exchange for toby but her little brother yeah her little brother and at the end when she like finally gets to toby and it's between them two he says he's got the ball and he goes just fear me love me do as i say and i will be your slave yes yeah i i yeah that's what's happening there david it's questionable yeah like well i i it's I, i don't know what kind of love he's trying to portray yeah but he's he's asking her yeah he's asking her to love him yeah but fear him but fear him. Says. there's a lot there's a lot that's bizarre and I, I know that he's meant to be this like malevolent goblin king so it makes sense for someone to like fear him and i, I don't know but also the dynamics between them are so weird and then like you see there's he's this owl as well at the beginning you see this owl that's following her everywhere and then the owl is what becomes the Goblin King. And then at the end, it turns back into the owl. And it's still kind of like watching over her and near her. Yeah. There's so much. I'm sure if we looked up, like, what what do we think the meaning of... You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it right now. So many, like, um, when you I watched it, there's so many, like, little rock formations or, like, you see in the labyrinth is his face everywhere. Oh, really? Yeah. So, like, in the rocks when he's about to give Hoggle the peach that, like, makes her dream, he mm-hmm. walks through rocks in the formation of his face. Oh, I didn't even notice that. And then, like, when she first sees the labyrinth, you look at, like, the labyrinth out, his face is also in there too. Just, like, ah. there's so much little weird stuff. Okay. 
I've the overall concept. So it says most people get that labyrinth is a metaphor for a young girl growing up and a modern day modern day fairy tale, which I do get because there's a whole line where she's looking at her toys. And there's this woman that comes along that has all this stuff built up on her back and she's piling all of her toys onto her and she kind of looks at it all and she goes, it's all junk and she like tries to get rid of it. Um, and it's clear that it's her, you know, dealing with the fact that she keeps repeating the line, it's not fair. And then at one point she kind of gets it. She goes, it's not fair, but that's just the way it is. So it's, I, I definitely get that, you know, fairy tale aspect of like her growing up right there. And then here it says... It doesn't take too much of a leap of imagination to figure it out. Sarah starts the film quite literally dressed as a princess, spouting childish nonsense from a book. She even has a fight with an evil stepmom. But then, here it says, however, the film is way more than a simple coming-of-age tale or a retail retelling of a grim story. It's about an older man seducing a younger woman and about the risk she faces losing her innocence. See? We called it. And I watched that when I was, like, four. <laughs> That was my favourite movie as a four-year-old. Yeah. See? It's odd. It's so weird. Oh, my God. And someone wrote, okay. Incidentally, the name itself is Hebrew and means God is good. Sarah. That's what Sarah means. Um, Sarah feels bogged down by this innocence. And then the person wrote, yes, I'm talking virginity here. And flirts with a rather dangerous older man in a bid to get rid of it. Cue the arrival of Jareth. Oh, my God. Interesting, isn't it? That in their first meeting, Jareth offers her a gift, a common ploy when seducing someone. That gift, when refused, transformed into a serpent. I mean, seriously, could this be any more biblical at this point? He's quite literally spelling it out. Agree to my terms and you'll lose your innocence. As simple as that. Wow. Wow. And then, so they're basically saying that, that Toby, her brother, is like an allegory for her virginity. That's insane. This is obviously one person's opinion, but it makes a lot of sense. It really does. And then it says, Damn. the final scene, of course, the most telling. Sarah begins to recite the words from her storybook, echoing back the opening moments. But as ever, she can't remember the all important line. Yet it's the one that matters the most. The one all women need to remember when they find themselves in this type of situation with a man. You have no power over me. Oh, <gasps> wow. Wow. We cracked the code. I... You have no power over me. That's so interesting. It that all makes sense. Makes me want to rewatch it just to like. It does. It makes so much sense. And it is true. The first thing he gives her to, when she refuses it turns into a snake. Um. Yeah, yeah, and there's like all the characters that you meet along the way as well, like are who who didn't even know her i feel like are obsessed with like getting her forgiveness and getting her friendship and stuff and i wonder what that's about too oh my god they all say straight away like the first like when she meets ludo like he looks at her and he's like friend and she's like yeah friend and she calls hoggle friend and he's like why would you call me your friend yeah and then at the end they're like if you ever need us just call us and she's like I feel like I need you at different points in my life and I need yeah. you now. And they're like, cool, let's party. And then they all just like literally party on her bed. Okay, let's see. It's talking about the three friends, Hoggle, Ludo and Sir Didymus, which is a funny name. Um, the, okay, the greatest clue about Hoggle's character is emblazoned on his back the very first moment we see him. Most are distracted by the fact he's having a wee in the pond, which I was. But if you're eagle-eyed, you'll notice that there is a face on his waistcoat. Yes, Hoggle is quite literally two-faced. I'd say there's more than meets the eye. He's a little like the god Janus with a foot in two fields. Working both for Jareth and helping Sarah, he looks forward but also looks back. He also represents cutting and wile, qualities Sarah needs to have if she's going to defeat the Goblin King. And then it says, Ludo um, is a friend as he so often reminds us. He off he offers unquestioning loyalty and strength, strength, plus a link to the natural world by being able to summon stones. Oh, so he's the one that's summoning the stones. If Sarah is going to beat Jareth, she needs steadfast kindness and loyalty too. Lastly, Sir Didymus represents bravery in the face of adversity, the final qu quality that Sarah must have to win back her innocence. Wow. I don't know if this is making me, like, really love it or... You're like, oh, I, I don't know how I feel about this movie now. Oh, no. What have I done? 
it's making me excited that there's something behind it because honestly while I was watching I was like I don't I, I understood there was something I could understand some themes going through but I was so focused on the fact that I was like she's 14 and he's that's creepy that's all he's I grown adult about. wearing like tight pants oh yeah the bulge is is really there yeah I used to watch it and be like I always wanted to, them to be like all right let's I thought last night I was like if they remade this movie I want to be Sarah and I want the Goblin King to be like Lady Gaga. Oh, yeah, absolutely. She can still wear tight pants. Yeah, Does absolutely. All the time. I tried to think of like someone else who would portray, like, play the Goblin King, and I just couldn't think of anyone else. No, I don't think there's anyone as good for the role that could like stand in Bowie's shoes. Yeah, that's a perfect example. Here it says as well. There are, many, uh, there are many other meaningful characters dotted throughout the film. The revolting ladies living in the garbage dump of the fallen women. Oh, the ones discarded by Jareth in the past who are jealous of Sarah's youth and attraction. The ones that are trying to get <gasps> put all the stuff on her. The fairies, which also used to terrify me, the person who wrote this, right? Um, represent the unadulterated pleasures of losing your innocence, quite literally losing their heads because their heads are coming up. Yeah, because they get shut down. Yeah. But also the danger that goes with it. No wonder they live right next door to the dreaded bog of eternal stench. Oh, my God. So is that – do we think that this if, – if these theories are true, that whoever wrote this movie <laughs> thinks that women who lose their innocence are, like, gross? Trash. What? <laughs> like, the women who lose their virginities are just, like – the ones that carry on all the trash and live in the garbage. Like, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> and then I just opened a new thing and it says, things about Labyrinth you only notice as an adult. And the first thing says, Jareth is packing. And then there's an image of his big old bulge. Yeah. Right? There's, and there's so many, like, random livestock that I was watching. I was like, they have pigs. So many, like, little pigs on leashes in the scene and so many chickens. Yeah. That's off topic, but there's so many things I, I realised. I was like, and also this poor kid playing, this, the kid's name's Toby, who plays Toby. Mm -hmm. Like the amount of times they would have had to make him cry in this filming. He's like, crying Could you imagine being that young? Time. Right? Like, and you're bawling your eyes out why these weird ass men are dressed as goblins and dancing around and throwing you up in the air. Yeah. Okay, wait, I just, I just had to, to, Revelations as well. One, Sarah's stepmother thinks she should be dating. That's the last thing she. That's the 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 inciting incident for it all. So her mum, her her thinking she should be dating, and Sarah being like, no, I don't. Why should I be doing that? Is like them putting in our minds the whole thing of virginity. Because her mum's like, go out and fuck, baby, and she's like, no, I just want to play in my room with my toys. Um, so that makes sense. And then also. The, the scene where they're dancing at that, like, ball thing, she's in, like, a white dress. She's, like, in, like, a white dress, which means It looks, virginity. like, nearly like a white wedding dress, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And or, it, like, I, a, a debutante dress. Exactly. With, like, giving away. And no one else is... Wear, no one else is wearing, wearing white. white. And they're and, all wearing masks. Yes, exactly. They're all covered. There's lots of, like, phallic-shaped masks as well. And then he, like, is dancing with her and he's, like, pulling her in closer the whole time. The way that she gets into that dreamlike state is because she bites, a pe like, a peach or a, or a nectarine or something, which is, like, Adam and Eve. And he gets her to take it so that she forgets everything else and forgets trying to save Toby. Mm -hmm. Is he, like, so he, like, drugs her <gasps> so that she forgets. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, right before, before, like, they're dancing quite close, she, like, remembers and, like, pulls away and run, tr runs away. And destroys it and then she goes to the garbage women. Yeah. That makes so much sense. And it would make sense that at the end of the day, like, she gets back in time, everything's okay, and then all she, she like, just hangs out with her toys in her room. If she's like, well, no, I'm going to keep being innocent and young. But then has she, like, learnt strength and, you know, courage and shit throughout yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. She's like, I won't be seduced by an older man. 
We we didn't expect this. I want everyone out there listening. So to much this. to unpack. We didn't expect to go down this road, but I, you know what? I love it. I love some film theory. Love learning. Love learning everything. It says Sarah's mirror is a Bowie shrine. Apparently, Sarah had a thing for David Bowie even before she entered the labyrinth. It's evident by the fact that her vanity table is uh, David Bowie shrine. There's the aforementioned statue of Jareth. Um, as well as several pictures of him stuck to her mirror. Many women who grew up in the 80s can attest that she's not the only person who's done this. Yeah, and it's all pictures of him. Because I, re- I recognise one of the pictures because <laughs> we're talking about Marianne again. Marianne loves Bowie. So her birthday one year, I like edited her face into all these photos. <laughs> and one of them was, uh, one was David Bowie and his wife and I put her face on it. Mm-hmm. And then also a photo of David when he was with Jareth and Sarah and I put her face on it and I was like oh I recognize one of those photos on the mirror. and I was like ah that's where it's from of course oh my god okay oh my god okay someone has written is Jim Henson's labyrinth an allegory for date rape well there you go but then like so she idolizes this man is he like he's a celebrity that she idolizes yeah and she's like mapping David Bowie onto this fictional Goblin King character from this book. And so she's like, Here, here's people telling her you should be dating, you should be growing up. And she's like, no, I don't want to grow up. I don't want to do anything. I wish whatever. And then her sub- she goes into her subconscious, which is the labyrinth, and has this weird uh experience where she's like should i do it should i go go out into the world and uh get deflowered by and if it's going to be anyone why not the celebrity i love and then he's like that would put me off it too yeah jesus what have we done (laughs) but you know it wasn't us we just googled some stuff it was other people right it's just so much yeah, it's oh. it a lot. My favourite little character is the little guy that's like, why don't you come in for a cup of tea? I'm just a worm. <laughs> Mine is, Don't I go think... that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't go that way. And then she walks off and then he's like, if she went that way, she would have gone straight to the castle, which is where she's trying to go. <laughs> yeah, right. And that's like right, it's just, that's like at the very beginning of her journey as well. Like it would have just saved her so much time. Also, the, back to when you're saying the like special effects. When there's at the very end, there's this room that's all those stairs. That's, I think that must be a rip off of that painting, that famous painting. Uh, yep, yep, yep. And David Bowie just at one point gets to like the end of a thing of stairs and then just walks underneath it, and it looks so fucked. It looks so funny. And then if you watch like um, the little kid Toby crawling around, he's just like this little like he has this like ring of light around him because clearly been edited upside down like there's so many special effects that you look at and you're like how did this even pass like at the start when you've got like she walks into the labyrinth and there's like these little things on the labyrinth with eyes like you look at them and then you look like just to the side and they've just like glued all these googly eyes that are just sitting there like limp on the side like clearly not doing anything you're like yeah okay good try yeah how many pup I, I, I wonder how many puppets they made because Jim Henson is so um, so famous for all of his puppets. It doesn't say, but in dance in dance magic specifically in the song, it said it consisted of forty eight Muppets and fifty two puppeteers and eight people in goblin costumes, and that's just in that one sequence. So in the whole movie, who knows? That's insane. One of my friends um, in LA got to work on a, a show with on um, Earth to Ned, which is a Disney Plus show with um muppets from like the Jim henson studios um and it looked so cool it looked so cool that would have been insane and that's like even in the last bit where they go into the goblin city and they have this bigger um battle with them like there was so many of them yeah and one of them goes i remember watching it and one of them's like i'm over it i'm going to bed and then it like goes into its house and then like the rocks come in and it's like get out of my house I was like, that's just me on the daily. But it's yeah. just, it was really interesting to just re- like read what they say. And they're like, stand your ground. And then they get hit and they're like, actually, no, let's leave. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of like, I mean, 
Now looking at all the little tiny things that happen within it, if you think about it, maybe it's all necessary that they keep everything in, but there's so much dialogue, like maybe time wise, it needs to be that long, but there's so much dialogue that it's just repeated stuff back and forth that I'm like, why are you saying this again? Yeah. It's like, yeah. What are you trying to reiterate? Or, or is there even a reason why you're saying this so many times? Yes, exactly. Before we wrap up, uh, our discussion about this insane movie. What is your favorite? What's your favorite thing about it? I want to I end on a positive note. My favorite like character is Ludo. I don't know. I always maybe because he's like this big fluffy thing. But as I was watching it last night, I really loved the um, what are they called? The fire um, ones that take off their heads. I literally had it in my head. Um, but I was watching their dance, and I was like. Damn, imagine being like those people in those costumes just like dancing like that. Um, I think that's like my favourite part of the movie is just maybe because it's more theatre-based. Um, yeah. It's like, it's just, it's a musical, you know? Yeah, yeah it is. And like where I was listening to, I was paying a lot of attention to the bits where it was just like the score rather than singing and being like the fact that David Bowie also composed all of this as well. It's a really great album. Mm-hmm. like I love listening to it it's so good quality music I actually would love to have a labyrinth party but like now that I go through it I'm like who <laughs> I would like I was like could I do that last night I was like if I had a labyrinth party I'd tell everyone they can dress up as whatever they want just don't dress up as Sarah at the ball because that's what I want to be yeah yeah I want to be pure yeah. I want to be <laughs> and then at the end of the party um you'll lo- finally lose your virginity yeah, and then I'll turn into a garbage woman. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because that's how it goes, you know? You exactly. lose your virginity and you know, what are you worth? Nothing. Any versions out there, um, this is your warning. Don't ever do it. Save that for yourself. You don't want to give anything to anyone. No. And we're not even saying save it until marriage. Pay. Just don't ever do it. No. Not worth it. You could always have just more fun with yourself than anyone else really anyway, so just don't bother. Yeah, and, I mean, if, you, if you're thinking, well, well, you know, what if I want to have a child? Yeah, there are so many children that need to be adopted. So how dare you, you selfish. Exactly. Or get someone else to hold the child, you know? You don't need to go through that. You don't need to have – you don't need to put your body through pregnancy. That's not exactly. fun. Uh, we also would like to put on record that this is all uh, a bit and we're joking and uh, go out and fuck. Oh, absolutely. If, you're, if, if you are uh, consenting and of legal age. And is the person that you're with. This is a, and this is a message for uh, creepy old men out there. Don't uh, try and lure in fourteen year olds, please. It's disgusting. Yeah. It's just what does it's like you know you see all those things about um eighteen year olds talking to fifteen year olds and you're like what do you want out of this like what what do you want out of this fifteen year old that you can't it just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, I could go on, but it just doesn't make sense. No. And that's what the labyrinth is like. What do you want out of this young woman? And we know what it is. It's her flower. Her flower. Mm. Her hymen, if you will. We, uh... <laughs> Which could have already been broken before that. I mean, she could have rode a horse or... Jumped on a trampoline. On a bus or jump... Exactly. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Wow, what a great note to end on. Can you please let anyone out there uh, who wants to find anything that you're up to know, where can they find uh, you on social media and everything? And is there anything you want to plug right now? Um, so my social media, it's really easy to remember. It's Zenya from Kenya. Um, I'm not actually from Kenya. It just rhymes. <laughs> um, I get asked a lot if I'm from Kenya. And my website is like Um, Watch scattered on tiktok i promise you'll love it it's about three friends who uh, are going through the loss of one of their best friends who dies um, of an aneurysm and they take his ashes out for one last night of partying and they lose it and wake up on a beach pretty hungover and have to find his ashes before his parents scatter him and it's really beautiful it's about like just how people people grieve differently and friendship and you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful story. So I could plug that. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. That's all I'm really doing. I mean, check out Mad as Hell in a couple of weeks or just actually watch it now because it's hilarious. It's the best. 
Um, and you might you might see me pop in for a little hello. Yay! So exciting. Everyone, watch everything that Zenya has ever done. You'll be very happy <laughs> that you did. And if you want to find anything that I'm doing, at Ashley Crap App on everything. We got Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, uh, Twitch, everything. So everything. Yeah, everything. Just everything. Thank you so much, Zenya. This is so much fun. No worries. Thank you so much for having me. Anytime. I loved it. Hopefully soon we'll be able to see each other in uh, real life, you know? Yeah, please. Yeah. I mean, like, we're those people that are like, what are you doing next week? I'm free Tuesday, Thursday. What about you? I'm free Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's happened 100,000 times, but we will make it work. Thank you, everyone out there. Have a beautiful day wherever you are. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.